Hey there, glad to have you a part of the Platinum Edge. My name is Christine Dwyer and I'm your host for this podcast and I really do appreciate all the time that you spend building your business and listening to these podcasts and training. I of course want to make sure that I'm helping you and I'm that girl that just likes to figure out what is challenging for people, what is just so complicated and they just don't have enough time to figure it out. I'm that girl that will figure it out for you, break it down into cliff notes, teach it to you in a system that works for you, but also duplicates within your team. So I'm glad to have you here. Now, as a reminder, we've got a couple announcements in the beginning here. First of all, just as a reminder, the Platinum Presenters coaches, don't forget to register for the Platinum Edge Conference. This, of course, is the podcast, but there is a conference for the Platinum Presenters Team Beachbody Coaches, which, of course, is in Dallas, Texas. This year, it's November 13th through the 15th, And I am announcing one of our guest professional speakers. So we have, of course, returning to the stage, one of my closest friends and mentors, Mrs. Shalene Johnson. She will be in attendance again for the Platinum Edge, training us a couple times, speaking from stage, giving us the lowdown secrets and tips to grow our business. But also, you won't want to miss her high energy workouts. Thankfully, that girl's got to work out and she wants to work us out. So she will be teaching two classes as well at the Platinum Edge. So knowing Shalene is going to be there and that you have that potential to rub shoulders and noses possibly with her, you make want to make sure that you go ahead and get your ticket because they are selling out. Now, for those of you who want to get a VIP ticket and get private time with Shalene and your picture and all, make sure you go ahead and get those VIP tickets right away. The second announcement, I want to let you know I've started something new and I want to feature you. I would love to do a Q&A and answer your questions on air. So if you want to ask me a question, go to speakpipe.com slash Christine Dwyer and ask your question and I will totally hook you up. Let's get into the meat of this topic. What is the problem with your business? Now, being a Beachbody coach myself, of course, for seven years, my join date was May 31st of 2008. It, of course, was a struggle in the very beginning for me to do this because, first of all, I'd never, ever, ever done network marketing, but there was no training system for the company at all. It was basically sign up and there you go, figure it out. And there was really no plan. And there had to have a plan created. And that's, of course, what I focused a lot of my time doing. As I said in the beginning, that's exactly what I love to do anyway. So it was right up my alley. And thankfully, I think it turned out. But also, there's a lot of issues with a lot of people trying to build their business. They are swimming and trying to tread water, making this happen. And they're getting frustrated. They're getting burned out. And they keep trying to figure out what is the problem. Why can't I get my business to work? And I have this conversation with my coaches. I have this conversation with other coaches. It's not you per se, but there are some actions that you really have to look more into yourself to really see where are you restricting yourself. And I want to go through some critical steps that you can do in your business that's going to make that change. Because I'm going to go through a day in the life of a typical coach where they're having a challenge growing their business. They feel like they're spending all their time spinning their wheels, still getting nothing to happen, still not increasing their income, still not increasing their team. And they've been doing this for such a long time and they're just wondering, what can I do different? I want to paint a picture for you. The problem is a lot of people really want to make things happen in their lives, but the want to doesn't really always turn into doing. Want to is always the gonna and never the follow through. It's about your activity. So let's paint this picture. A typical picture of a new coach starting in their business is they, of course, get their assignment. They join in and they get their activity. Let's get you started in the training program. So they get their little trusty training checklist start going through some of the activity to get started, get their website up, start listening to possibly a recorded call, and make sure that they're plugging into the team's training and program. Well, there's typically fundamentals when it comes to building a Team Beach Body Coach. Not a secret, obviously the company runs by three vital behaviors, of course, with make sure you're a product of the product, 
Make sure that you're inviting, inviting, as well as working on your personal growth and development. But I'm going to just kind of separate that a little bit. I'm going to separate it into five categories. So the fundamentals of a coaching business are that you should be sharing the business opportunity. The second, of course, is that you should be sharing the products. And the third, that you should be sharing your journey for your fitness journey, as well as your experience with the products and community. The fourth is continuous education and learning and implementation. And the fifth is that you're continuing to create value, content, and places for someone to connect to. So those are the fundamental vital behaviors when it looks to coaching activity. Does that sound familiar? Are you nodding your head thinking, well, yeah, that is. I do do that. I do. I'm online all the time kissing my Shakeology cup. Aha, maybe that's a little bit of the problem. All right, I want to paint a picture for you. I want to go through a typical day in the life of a typical coach who keeps treading water and not making much happen in their business. So here we go. Starts off. This is where you, of course, get in as a coach. You go through the setup. You've got your wheels on and you're raring to go. Here's a typical day. A typical coach will lounge surfing on Facebook. So they'll sit at their laptop, iPhone, Android, whatever device they have, and they'll surf through Facebook, like comments or make comments, put a post up, of course, see what their friends are doing in the feed. Then they'll go over to their groups, check in on the groups, maybe check in on the team page, group, comment, cheer people on, give their two cents when a question's asked. You know, they're just on social media. Maybe they'll jump over to Instagram. Then they'll jump over to Pinterest for a little bit and see what other coaches have been putting up on their Pinterest page. Well, let me go back to Instagram and then also see what some of those other coaches that have been doing really great on Instagram, let me see what they've been putting in. That moves them into that next phase of how else they are building their business that day. So the next phase of how they're building their business is they're getting ideas. They're getting ideas from inspiration from other coaches. They're getting ideas and inspiration from some of the training that they are possibly listening to or got on a team call, a webinar, the national wake-up call. They're getting ideas and they're starting to write them down. You're surfing online and you see something that stops you in your tracks on Facebook. You're like, oh, that's great. I didn't even think of that. And they write that down. And then they go into the back office and they go through some of the video trainings and information. And they get some other light bulb moments and they write that down. So you're getting lots of ideas and you're really capturing them from all different areas, from other top coaches, just from ideas of other people putting their experience out there. You got some good ideas. The next step is really that that coach really wants to meet their goals. They really write down their goals and their desires, what they really want to have change in their life, how they can see their daily life and how they can picture it a month from now, three months, six months, two years from now, whatever it is. They write down their goals and they really want to make those happen. So they figure out some action items, some to-do lists, and of course those goal lists. Now the next thing that they'll do is of course, they share the products. I discussed this, of course we put up a picture of our Shakeology mix of the day. Just finished your workout, a sweaty faced picture. You standing in front of the TV with a sweaty tank top. But you're sharing your products and your journey online. You're putting it out there. You're, you're putting your information and breadcrumbs out on Google Plus and over on Instagram. And you're creating this information over on Twitter as well. Letting people know about that 21 day fix. And that you have a challenge group that's going to start in a couple weeks and that you want to get some people in. So you're really putting how great you feel doing your workout today. That you didn't want to do it, but you did it anyway. And then you put a picture up of some of your meals that you ate that day. You know what? This is perfect because I had my Shakeology for breakfast. So then this lunch was a perfect match. It follows the 21 Day Fix program. Okay, so those are some of your posts that you put up. And the other thing that an average coach does every day is, of course, they open up groups or they actually are supporting a big group of accountability for people who just really want to have more accountability in their fitness, in their eating, and they want to have a place to plug in. So you 
put them in this big group, this big pile of group, and, and you call it something cute. The name of the group is Hot Mamas Get Hotter or something that just really attracts your niche market. And you feel good because you've got a hundred or maybe even more people in this group and you love helping them. You, you check in on that group and you give them your tip of the day. You upload a, an amazing inspirational picture. You give them an idea of a recipe that they could do. And you're constantly motivating them and cheering them on and sharing your struggle in this group of accountability. And someone asks, well, what do I do about this meal plan that you're offering? I don't like to eat fish. So what else should I eat? And you answer, you give them some tips on what else they could have. And then, you know, a couple days later, someone else says, I don't eat dairy. What should I be eating if I'm not going to eat dairy? And then you, of course, give them some advice. And then some other person comes on and says, you know, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to get bulky. And so you answer that question. And then another question, another days and more. And you keep coming back because people keep commenting on that question, asking you to dive deeper. Well, if I don't want to eat chicken, then what else can I eat if I don't want to eat fish or chicken? And you have to keep diving further, clarifying a little bit more. But then it kind of goes a little bit bigger that someone just really wants to keep having you answer a lot of tips for them. And you keep coming back in trying to get them connected and hooked onto eating clean. And then you log into your back office. You log into the back office and you look at that My Alert section, hoping, crossing your fingers, that you'll see by surprise one new personally sponsored coach. Or you've got five new coaches added in your organization. Or you have two new customers. You go back and you look at those My Alerts and they all still say zero. And then it's payday, it's Thursday. And you look at the commissions and you check in your commissions and, oh, this week I didn't make any team cycle bonus. Darn it. Next week happens again. You log in. Oh, I still didn't make any team cycle bonus. I have no commissions. What? I'm doing everything. Third week comes in and you check that commissions. $14. Woo! Got my $14 for the month. That's the typical day in the life of a coach who says that they really want to do it and they're a part of the activity that they should be doing. And they are engaged. They're doing what they are being told to do to grow their business, but it's not working. It's not working. Now that coach is a social experience coach. They are socially a coach. And I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into this, and I'm sorry if this cuts you, but hey, the truth hurts, especially when you say you want something to happen, but you just keep lining up excuses and validations to confirm why you're not achieving your goals putting blame on other people, putting blame on the system, putting blame on your situation. Everyone has a situation. How you control that situation is up to you. I want to talk about your identity. Your identity is how you are outwardly telling the world who you are. You always label yourself. You self-label yourself as to what your limitations are. When you announce to the world what your identity is, it's okay. It's then okay that you aren't amazingly successful. It's okay then that you aren't having a huge team. Here are some labels that might sound very familiar. I'm just not outgoing. I don't know how to share the business. I don't have many connections. My network around me, they just don't have any money and they don't even like fitness. Those are some of the identities that we put on ourselves, the labels that we put on ourselves. But if we keep labeling ourselves into that identity, that's what we're seen as. We won't be seen as a successful entrepreneur. We'll still be seen as that silly little pyramid scheme that you keep trying to make happen. You still fooling yourself with that thing? You're still doing that? Oh, come on. When are you going to give up on that? Why, first of all, do you have to give up on health and fitness? Being a coach doesn't mean that you have to build it as a business. Thankfully, being a coach can be about surrounding yourself with positivity, with a lifestyle based around health, fitness, support, exercise, nutrition, healthy nutrition, and being that example for your kids and for other kids. That's what being a coach is. Building a business is the plus bonus side. Hey, 
You can also make money if you want to. Okay, I chose that road too. Why not? But we can take that identity and people can, they can crush us with it. They can bash our identity because we keep saying why we're not making it happen because we've outwardly told people that. I want to give you something to think about. You need to challenge your identity. And the only way to challenge your identity is to have an experience submersion. Let me give you a couple examples. All right, so many of you guys know about the TV show Dancing with the Stars. Well, I've never, of course, been on Dancing with the Stars, but I know what it's about. I used to watch it for seasons, and it's about taking average people that are celebrities, so average celebrities that aren't amazing dancers, aren't known for dancing. I mean, they had Emmett Smith on there, amazing Dallas Cowboys football player. Of course, he's not known for dancing. He wasn't expected to do amazing. Of course, he's not dancing. He's not known. That's not his identity. He's not a dancer. His identity, he's a football player. He can't do well as a dancer. He's a football player. And that's what he said his identity was. So he joins Dancing with the Stars. And he submerses himself into the training, the long hours of training, the commitment, the follow-through, that when he takes that stage, he comes across so believable, so amazingly believable that he is a dancer because he submerged himself into the dancer's world. He committed. He did everything it took to learn the little, little, little details that were so painfully uncomfortable for this massive football player to do. But he did because he knew that quality comes down to those little details, the little foot position, the finger position on an extended arm. He had to pay attention to those details and do it so awkwardly so in the beginning until that over and over and over and over again training is to a point where he nailed it. That he submerged himself into being a dancer. He thought like a dancer. And that's when he would take the stage and you would see him as a dancer. We didn't doubt him. Once you saw his commitment, his follow through, you were like, this is going to be a good season. Because we saw how believable he was. Let's put it into a sport that you used to play. That first time that you were joining that sport. It was the first time that you ever done it. And you were nervous about it because you've never done this before. No one's going to think that you can do well. And you've got to prove to the coach that you're good enough. And you want to start. You had to dive deep into that training, that commitment, and push so uncomfortably so, so that you can be seen as that player, as that teammate. You had to follow through. Does this make sense? Because entrepreneurs dabble too much as a social experience entrepreneur. And of course, you're never going to be seen as an entrepreneur because you're not committing You're not following through with the hard details and that over and over and over practice of the hard details and fundamentals that make your business grow. So if we look back at those fundamentals, if we look back at that picture I painted for you of a typical day in the life coach, let's compare and see now why when you log into your back office, you're not seeing change. Let's go back to those fundamentals. One. Share the business every day. Do you? Do you specifically speak to someone about the business every day? No, I'm not saying hide behind your fingertips online on your phone or on the keyboard. No, that's not it. Because that's hiding. Because when you are typing to someone, there's no control in that. You have to make conversation with people. You have to get them on the phone and you have to speak with them in person. Are you effectively sharing the business every day? Because guess what? That's a fundamental of your business. If you're not sharing the business or following up with someone about the business that you shared it to, then of course your business says no new coaches and no one added in your organization. Check mark social coach. Okay. Sharing the products. 
Are you effectively going out and inviting people to try that product? To come into your challenge group and get a product to use so that they can have success? Are you effectively doing that every day? Because if you're not, you know where I'm going with this. Check social coach. Third, share your journey. I can go into a big, long discussion about this one. And I did discuss the social coach does put a lot of content out there talking about how amazing and sweaty that size dance workout was today and how awesome their Shakeology was of the day. And they cannot comment without telling someone, I know I didn't love fitness until I started doing Body Beast and then I added 21 Day Fix and then also I added Shakeology and now I just feel so amazing because that's a typical comment that a social coach puts on another Beachbody coach's social media platform. They are so desperate to leave a breadcrumb everywhere that they violate a current Beachbody coach's page and they leak all those bonus words so that someone will see it and want to click on them and go to them. Social coach. Education and learning. Are you in education and paralysis? You can learn all day, but are you just writing down good ideas? Yes, that's a great idea. I want to do that. Yep. Ooh, I like that what that person did on their Instagram. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to learn on that podcast. Oh, I'm watching Periscope. I'm learning. Got it. I'll learn all you want. All you got to do now is implement. When you write something down, are you actually then going to do it? Do you do it? What have you gotten done out of the last good ideas that you have done? Because a social coach has a lot of great ideas, but very few follow through. And the final, creating value and content and a place to go. Here's the big problem. Okay, sure. You feel you're creating value and content and you're inspiring and motivating people. And you may be, of course, I can't say you're not. I know I'm not following everybody. But there's a level to it that you continue to just keep doing it and supporting people. Just like that massive accountability group where you keep spending so much of your time, the rare few precious moments in the day that you say, I'm so busy and I really want to make this work, this beach body business work, but I've got a full-time job and I've got three kids and I've got all these sports to run to. I barely have any time to build my beach body business. So during those few moments at night when the kids finally go to bed and you log on to do your beach body business and you search the social feeds and you write down all the good ideas that you got. And at the same time, you're listening to the national wake up call. And then you're also going into your accountability group, Hot Mama's Getting Hotter group, and you're answering those repetitive questions that someone already asked weeks ago again and again and again and commenting and just cheering those people on again, giving them constant time and information over and over and over again, where you're never leading them to actually follow through with a higher commitment with you. Giving so much of your time to constantly giving free, free, free leads you to no money. I'm not saying you can't run those groups. Feel free to. But you need to put a very tight lockdown limit of how much time you give in that group. And you need to allow the group to support each other. You don't need to answer every question. If that group wants to thrive, let it thrive. But if you're living in it and constantly giving of yourself to free people wanting free information all the time, then who cares that you're running a challenge group? They're not going to go for it because you're saying you have to buy a challenge pack to be a part of it. Well, I'm fine. I'm good right here. Thanks. You're giving me free information and support right here. Thanks. I'll stay right here. So if you're constantly giving up your time and not leading people to a place to go, you're not building your business. You're just a social coach. So what do you need to send people to? You need to send people to. This is the critical, critical step. One of the fundamental steps, you can, of course, create that value in that content. But if you are not capturing people into a list every day and you're depending on them to remember to come to you when they're ready or just saving their emails in a Facebook email inbox and then just reaching out to them, checking in on them every so often, just saying hi or just supporting them in this massive Hot Mamas Hotties group and hoping that one time, One of them is going to say, I want to coach or I now want to get the 21-day fix. 
but that just every time it just never happens and you're wondering when is this going to happen I just keep giving of myself what's going on that's what's going on because you're not giving people a place to go you're not making them commit further you give them too much of yourself for free and there's no commitment to work with you in an elite sense every day you of course should be offering value but you need to have an opt-in page an opt-in page means that you are having people sign up to get closer to you a typical way to create an opt-in page is that you're giving away something that your niche market the people who are like you need they need it they would love it if you had a checklist that would help someone who had the same problem that you had before And they've got that problem now, but you figured it out and you said, hey, you know what? I figured out what to do and I just created a quick little checklist. If you want to go get it, just go get it right here. And they enter their email in and it automatically gets sent to them. You now have a contact list. So now when you are marketing that this next month, you're going to be running a challenge group and it's going to be special this month and you would love for them to be a part of it. And you remember that they said that they really want to buckle down and get fit again. You now have people to directly talk to. If you don't have a way to directly speak to people outside of a public forum, you've got nothing. You've got a social business. Social businesses are fun. Social businesses will eat up your time. It will create conflict within yourself, within your marriage, within your relationships, with your coaches. You'll get burned out. You'll get disgruntled. And you're going to swear, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Sorry, you didn't work. So if you are fine with being a social experience coach, that again is fine. You just have to accept that your business won't grow to that capacity, especially for income. You are not having that identity as an entrepreneur. You don't have that identity. You're not telling the world that's what you're doing because you tell the world what you're not doing. You are living by social experience. And the only way that you can identify as being an entrepreneur, as a coach, is by doing those fundamentals, speaking to someone directly every day to share the business and speaking to someone every day, following up with someone that you shared the business to, speaking to someone about the products sharing your journey consistently, your experience. So the one critical step that if you don't have it done is that opt-in page. If you're just not getting enough leads and you just keep scraping the walls trying to find contacts and people to talk to to get into your challenge group to talk to about coaching, well, that's your own fault. Creating an opt-in page and a sign-up form, whatever you want to call it, has been taught over and over again. I know I've taught it multiple times. I've given away systems for it. And I'll tell you exactly where to go so you can watch my training on it. But if you don't have that done, you just keep pushing more time away that you're not going to be able to create that level of success. What are you waiting for? You know what has to get done. Are you just going to write it down on your to-do list? Yep, that's a good idea. I want to challenge your identity. I want to challenge your identity and take the challenge for experience submersion. Your identity is an entrepreneur and a coach. Be seen as that and do the action that that identity does. Dive deep into the training, that uncomfortable position, and do it every day. Every day. It has to happen and you will see a huge change. Let's see what is possible. If you want to get that training on how to create an opt-in form, sign-up form, and to know what to give away to someone. I mean, what what are you going to give away to someone? Another meal plan because everybody's giving away a meal plan? Nah, don't do that. Been there, done that, don't do it. Why don't you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer. So if you go through my videos, you'll see how to create an opt-in form and sign-up form. And I did a Periscope on it, which also will lead you to a longer video that will go into a deeper dive. It will help you specifically know what to create to give away. 
I hope this has been a wake-up call for you. And I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, but sometimes the person that wants you to succeed most in life has to put you up to a challenge. And I'm that person. I do truly want you to succeed. Why would I give so much of my time to help you guys with training? I want to challenge your identity. Get into the experience submersion. Appreciate you guys, definitely. And again, if you are a Platinum Presenters coach, please go to PlatinumPresenters.com and register for the Platinum Edge so that you can get your seat to the most elite conference that is going to crush your business in a good way. Until next time.